Lawrence Larry. Welcome uh, back to the mother of all talk shows, an honoured guest uh, over uh, many, many uh, years now. Um, let's have as a hypothesis that I'm right, that the Hezbollah enter the war at dawn on Friday if Israel has not ceased fire. What happens right. next? Well, first, let me thank you for your generous comments, my friend. It is uh, always an honor to be with you. Uh, yeah, I listen, I wake up with a pit in my stomach every morning, just waiting for the world to catch on fire. Um, this is, uh, I don't know if you recall that movie about a hurricane. It was called The Perfect Storm, where two or three hurricanes yeah. all came together and just created a horrific situation that killed people. Uh, th that's what I think we're about to experience, because we have never in this entire 75 years of uh, Israel's existence experienced anything like what we're seeing now, where the growing unity in both the Arab and Muslim world, and even outside of the Arab and Muslim world, increased horror in terms of the reaction to the Israelis just wantonly killing women and children without any regard. Uh, and, 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 and then it's compounded by American politicians who are insisting that anybody who's in, in Palestine, in, in Gaza, is a Nazi, is the equivalent of a Nazi and should be killed. Uh, and so I'm, in fact, I'm planning to write later tonight uh, an article that will expose this member of Congress who said that, because he's also supporting Ukraine, where there actually are real Nazis. You know, think about that. Yeah. just the absurdity of it. Yeah. So uh, Hezbollah's ability is, is, I think, greatly underestimated by many in the world. Uh, you know, they keep saying Hezbollah is sort of on the dole with Iran, and that's just nonsense. That was the case through the 1980s into the mid-1990s. But then Hezbollah sort of stood up on its own and began uh, building infrastructure, became a political party, became a social welfare agency, became essentially a government, and created a, a very stout military force. And it was in 2006 that Israel discovered, much to its chagrin, uh, where they invaded southern Lebanon, and Hezbollah just chewed them up. Uh, and Israel essentially lost that engagement with Hezbollah. Now, here we are, of, you know, uh, 16, 17 years later, Hezbollah stronger now, better equipped, better trained. And uh, Israel, I you know, should be praying uh, to God that Hezbollah does not enter the fray. But I think I think you're right that if this killing of the civilians does not stop, then it, the Muslims, Shia and Sunni alike, are going to feel compelled to rise up in their defense. And, uh, of course, uh, Hezbollah is an independent force, but uh, if the United States, off its aircraft carriers, begin bombing Hezbollah and bombing Lebanon, <laughs> yeah. other people are then going to join in quite quickly, aren't they? Well, yes, and you know, it's day is a. We had a baseball player by the name of Yogi Berra, and he always said something like, "It's deja vu all over again." So, uh, <laughs> you know, the Americans have forgotten what happened in 1983 when Ronald Reagan put battleships off the coast of Lebanon, and we th and decided it was going to be a good idea to shell uh, Hezbollah positions in the Baqa Valley. Well, what happened? Hezbollah punched back through the uh, skill of Imam Mugnia, blew up a Marine barracks, killing over 250 Marines. And then a few months later, four or five months later, in October, uh, blew up the U.S. Embassy in Beirut. Uh, you know, what was it about that that we didn't learn? If we're going to start throwing shells at Hezbollah, Hezbollah is not going to curl up in a fetal position and start whimpering like some beaten dog, they're going to fight back, and they're going to hurt the United States. They will kill diplomats. They will kill military personnel. They will hit infrastructure. 
And, you know, they're not doing it because they hate our freedom. They're doing it because we struck the first blow. The uh, United States has, for bizarre reasons, uh, illogical uh, set of decisions, uh, forces all over the Middle East who are as isolated as any Benghazi uh, embassy ever was. The U.S. Mm -hmm. forces in Iraq, for example, are at the mercy of a horde of millions. Uh, the right. U.S. base uh, in Syria, at the oil fields, is completely at the mercy of whomsoever yes. uh, decides to attack it. American soldiers are in harm's way right now. Do the American people know it? Have they, have they agreed oh. to it? No, absolutely. That's, you know, that's one of the big lies that's going on back here. Uh, I, I checked in with a buddy of mine who's still uh, in the military, in the intelligence business. And I said, hey, are things getting better or worse? And he said this this morning, he said worse. Every U.S. base in Iraq, in Syria, and some down into Eritrea, in the Horn of Africa, are getting shelled and shelled consistently, hit with drones, and they may get hit with bigger missiles. So uh, it's likely that the United States has taken casualties and they're not reporting it, just like Israel has been reluctant to report its casualties from its ground invasion. Uh, so Americans just, you know, we, we, we like to watch these televised wars where we get to see the explosions and, the, and listen to the, the sounds, but we don't actually have to experience the horror of it firsthand. And that only starts becoming, sinking in, when the bodies start coming back. And then you have to deal with grieving relatives. But uh, it is, it's, it's one thing, they, they're not paying attention. And the, uh, the Iran has a lot of room. You know, Iran has been hit. America has attacked Iranian interests. Uh, and Iran has good motive, ample motive to want to strike back. And I think they've been sort of biding their time. That's why I think, as you you know correctly note, Friday, Friday could be a very pivotal time, uh, depending upon what Nasrallah, uh, the head of Hezbollah, has to say. The uh, United States Delta Force, we know because crazy Joe Biden took a picture of himself <laughs> with him yeah. and published it. The United States Delta Force is in Israel. There are many who say, uh, I can't confirm it myself, maybe you can or not, uh, the Delta Force is in Gaza, certainly at the fence, if not inside the Strip. Why would the U.S. get directly involved in a conflict such as this? Yeah, so that's that's the area I used to work with, and I actually worked with those uh, particular units over a 23-year period. So they are they are called into a, there's a, a a war plan, if you will a plan for responding to the capture of hostages. So uh, the, Delta, the Delta Force, at a minimum, would be there to consult, provide advice uh, to the Israelis. Uh, it's unlikely that they would get involved with a direct assault on any particular location unless they had confirmed intelligence that there was, in fact, an American hostage there. So that is their mission. Um, now, it is, we're not seeing the flow of what I'd call conventional forces. Uh, this, this, at this point, it appears from what I've been able to see in public, uh, to, uh, confined to the special operations community. Uh, it also could potentially include the SEALs. But uh, as you correctly noted, uh, you know, Biden had a happy, happy uh, snap photo with a couple of members of Delta Force standing there, and then they tried to block out their faces. So uh, there was there was word circulating through Doug McGregor said he had been told that some members of uh, Delta had accompanied the Israelis on an initial reconnaissance mission uh, last week and that there were there were casualties from that. And that very well could be. It's like a bad movie uh, script. Um, hmm. The yeah. the uh, the situation, uh, of course, of the aircraft carriers now. I genuinely don't want to see your aircraft carrier sunk because a lot of poor sailors would lose their lives. 
But aircraft carriers are very last century things, Larry. They are yeah. <laughs> actually yeah. the perfect target. They are the perfect target. Now, I don't know the capability of Hezbollah, but I'm going to take a wild guess from past experience that Hezbollah could, could put a missile down the chimney of one of your aircraft carriers with absolutely catastrophic results. Are they thinking this through yeah. properly in the Pentagon? Oh, heavens no. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, as you correctly note that the aircraft carrier today is like the horse cavalry at the start of World War II. You know, they learned in World <laughs> War I that the horse cavalry was no longer relevant, but they kept it around for another 20 years because it was a jobs program and they had it in the budget. And, and lo and behold, here we've got these aircraft carriers now, which are the these ex most expensive piece of military equipment ever created. And it takes years to build, and it has absolutely zero defense against hypersonic missiles that we know that Russia has them, we know that China has them, and it's rumored that Iran has them. And if they launch those, those ships, they're done. And, and I think that's one of the real risks in the coming, you know, next couple of weeks, that this could get out of hand, that um, as it expands beyond uh, just Hamas uh, to the Palestine and Islamic Jihad, the Pij, uh, to Hezbollah, uh, to other groups in the region, that they could decide to target those ships. And if they take all, all they got to do is take one down, they take one down. America is going to be faced with some terrible options. Now, there's a group uh, that you didn't mention uh, that says they've already fired uh, missiles. Uh, this Ansar Allah, the Houthis in Yemen. The Houthis, uh, yeah. One can assume that they have uh, the missiles they talked of. They said they fired them. I've seen no report of them landing anywhere. Do you think the Yemenis right. are also a factor in this? Uh, they're a minimal factor. They're more of a distraction for both Israel and the United States. Uh, but um, they, you know, the war that was going on in between the Houthis and the, the government in, in, in Yemen was, you know, a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and, and Iran. China came in, settled that war between them, made them buddies again got them on the same uh, diplomatic page, that it's still possible that Iran could, you know, if threatened or if uh, having been hit and deciding to retaliate, could, you know, use the, the Houthi positions in Yemen as another uh, launch pad to go after Israel. So up, up to this point, Iran has not inserted itself in the, to the, into the conflict. And I think that's been because both China and Russia have canceled constraint. But with with all the bellicose threats coming out of uh, both Israel and the United States demanding an attack on Iran, you know, imagine how you would react in the UK or, you know, my fellow citizens would react in the United States if if they've heard day after day cries from Iran to attack America. We must attack America and destroy America. When we say, oh, they're just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the Iranians know that uh, there's no kidding involved. Um, that's the big enchilada, Larry, isn't it? Uh, yeah. A war with Iran, which is itself militarily very powerful, uh, and which has quite unprecedented statement China made last week, ap appearing to be a guarantor of Iran's national sovereignty, independence, interests, and so on. That's when it could go global, mm -hmm. isn't it? If America attacks Iran, yeah. what if China uh, attacks the rest of us in defense of Iran and takes Taiwan as a bonus? Yeah. In fact, you know, let's go back to starting in 2017, Iran began coordinating with China and Russia on conducting joint military exercises, joint naval exercises. 
The first one took place in February of 2019. The reason I say it started in 2017, I, I know from my own experience that when we do these kinds of military exercises, the planning for it, what they call planning conference, starts at least 18 months out. So that, you know, they don't just wake up one morning and go, hey, let's let's get a bunch of ships together and sail around. So over the last four years, since 2019, Iran has had Russia and China exercising alongside it. And I think you put your finger exactly on the heart of the matter. China and Russia have given assurances to Iran saying, OK, look, be patient. Don't escalate this too quick. But if they attack you, we will have your back. We will support you. And unlike promises from the United States where, you know, if the U.S. tells you that they've got your back, you better be alarmed. <laughs> you might be sexually assaulted. But but I, when with Russia, when Russia and China tell you this, I, those are promises you can count on. And that is that's where this is headed. Because Nikki Haley, one of the aspiring uh, candidates for the uh, Republican nomination, she was saying, we got we got to hit hit Iran. I mean, uh, and Lindsey Graham, Senator Richard Blumenthal on the Democrat side. It It is bipartisan craziness over here in the, the land of the free, home of the brave. It's just it's nuts.